Wouldn't it be a shame if all those health influencers that talked about taurine's health benefits suddenly had to walk those statements back? That happens sometimes, or it should happen if a person is ethical. But is that what should happen here? A big new study released just a few weeks ago indicating that taurine is not only linked to cancer, but accelerates cancer directly. Since taurine, an amino acid produced by our body, but also discovered to offer multiple health benefits when consumed, has been making some waves for its possible longevity benefits, its cardiovascular benefits, its exercise benefits, and more, it might be surprising to suddenly see it attached to cancer. This uh, study looks primarily at animal data, but does also introduce human data that we'll get to. First, the researchers identified taurine as being heavily implicated in multiple leukemias. These are uh, blood cancers, especially uh, immune cell cancers that originate in your bone marrow where your immune cells, among other cells, begin their life. The researchers were initially interested in the cancer microenvironment, the surrounding area that the cancer rests in and around. This area is full of support cells like fibroblasts, endothelial cells, stem cells, structural proteins, and much more. This microenvironment releases different molecules and interacts with nearby cells to allow cancer cells to multiply and leave, known as metastasis. In fact, if we look at the cycle of cancer progression and map it against these microenvironment cells, we can see changes in how these support cells change over the cancer progression. On the bottom, we have four defined stages of cancer, and the vertical axis is the proportional amount of these support cells, and the colored lines indicate the amount of each type of support cell. As one example, we can see that these uh, cancer cells, known as leukemic cells, progress into expansion or growth, the osteo-1 lineage of cells, bone cells, dramatically decrease, and we see more MSCs, mesenchymal stem cells. The point here being that the tumor cancer microenvironment changes to presumably support the leukemic cancer cell development. Why am I telling you all this? Well, the researchers point out that while taurine is known to be produced by the liver primarily, bone marrow cells also have the ability to produce taurine, implying that taurine is a key molecule in cancer progression. In fact, they offer evidence by injecting genetically modified leukemic cells in a mice and identifying if the mice survive longer if they're injected with leukemic cells devoid of the taurine transporter or with the taurine transporter. So, to be clear, both groups have cancer. One cancer is missing the transporter that allows taurine into the cell, effectively divorcing the regular cancer from the impact taurine might have. If we look at that data, we have the survival data on the vertical axis, higher is better, and the time that's elapsed on the horizontal. The blue line is the cancer with an intact taurine transporter, and the green line is the cancer with the taurine transporter knocked out. As you can see, all the mice with the taurine transporter included leukemia die. And although the other mice, well, they're not exactly celebrating their condition, they do much better, with some even surviving altogether. This damns the taurine transporter, and by extension, taurine, as a major determinant for leukemia's deadliness. But how does it do that? One of the primary ways that your cells end their existence when destabilizing into cancers through a mechanism called apoptosis, as well as necrosis. These are both ways for the cell to die. Unfortunately, that goes against the cancer agenda, and we wouldn't have cancer if these mechanisms worked well all the time. So they clearly have been compromised. Part of those mechanisms is mediated by a family of proteins called the BCL family. They're a pretty uh, tumultuous relationship amongst themselves. But BCL2 is an anti-apoptosis protein. It blocks cell death by binding pro-apoptosis proteins and sequestering them, disabling them from killing the cell. Not what you want in cancer. If we look at that data, you can focus on the right graphs. The higher the bars, the more cell death. A good thing. The plus and negative at the bottom is the presence and absence of the taurine transporter. Clearly, with the taurine transporter present, there's less cell death. So somehow, taurine or the transporter is leading to reduced sensitivity to cell death. 
there's even further evidence of that that we'll get into. We'll uh, look into some of the subtypes of leukemia as well as human data and then get into how we should be thinking about taurine going forward. Should you cut it out of your supplement stack, for example? If you want more on the mechanisms of taurine, especially on how it affects cancer metabolism, taurine's cancer growth effects, and some more details on the study, check out my premium research review. It's called the Physionic Insiders. You not only get access to this full analysis of this study, but hundreds of studies, including 30-second written summaries, uh, exclusive videos, an exclusive podcast, uh, live sessions with me, and more. The link's in the description box if you're interested. We see taurine's role further evidence when looking at different subtypes of leukemia, those with different genetic backgrounds like primitive AML and monocytic AML. Monocytic AML, so AML stands for acute myeloid leukemia, FYI, is known to be a more drug-resistant version of leukemia. And we can see it has far greater expression of the taurine transporter gene, also known as SLC6A6, indicated on the vertical axis. So the transporter is at least associated with increased drug resistance, which probably doesn't exactly bode well for survival. Now, all this has been in mice, and as people enjoy reminding each other, it's just a mouse study, it means nothing. We definitely shouldn't overinterpret these data on their own, but the researchers do include some translational evidence in humans. Here, we're looking at patients with leukemia, and again, as morbid as it is, the vertical axis indicates survival, so the further up and to the right, the better. The horizontal axis is time, and the 11.14 marker is the cutoff for high and low expression of the taurine transporter. Clearly, people, the green line, that have greater expression of the taurine transporter have worse survival. In addition, there's an important clue in the right graph. We're looking at the taurine transporter expression in human cells on the vertical axis. Higher is more. Normal there are non-cancerous bone marrow cells and the two types of focused leukemia. So BCCML or blast crisis chronic myeloid leukemia and AML, so acute myeloid leukemia. Clearly, both leukemias have far greater expression of the taurine transporter. So while we still can't fully say everything that we see in animals is true for humans, we clearly see some strong similarities. In the end, what does this mean for two groups of people? One, people who supplement with taurine, and two, people with cancer. Well, while people have reached out to me to ask about this study because they're concerned about their daily taurine intake, notice how none of the data discussed went over how consuming taurine actually creates cancer. In fact, while there's clearly a close relationship between taurine and its transporter into the cells, the researchers didn't assess supplementation of taurine, but focused on the tumor microenvironment potentially using taurine to accelerate cancer growth. It seems reasonable that if this held true and a person supplemented with exogenous taurine, they'd see similar effects, but we don't know that for a fact. As a final note, I'd add that if we look at this uh, human data again, this sudden increase in the taurine transporter might also require a bunch of genetic changes that are unique to cancer. So simply consuming taurine, even if it did increase taurine transporter number, may not actually do anything because there isn't that cancerous background. Either way, for people without cancer, nothing in this study tells us there is a risk. As for people with cancer, we can only speak to leukemias, and even there, this is preliminary evidence. But it depends on your risk tolerance, since this study still doesn't inform on actual supplementation, although the researchers do warn that supplementation of any sort may be something to avoid for people with leukemia, even if taurine has been linked to positive outcomes in other regards of health. So if you want more direct evidence, this study shouldn't budge you. But if you're wanting to be extra careful, it's not unreasonable to cut down on taurine consumption, especially since taurine is a conditionally non-essential amino acid. What's fascinating is that there's this massive study on the longevity effects of taurine that released a few years ago. I mean, what a stark contrast. You can find it right here. Thanks for hanging out.